of town here in the office, John Quinn and Dave Sawyer uh, joining us virtually, and Flo Smith. Um, any public comment? Additions or changes to the agenda? No. All right. We got uh, Otter Creek uh, with the uh, Fisher Road culvert. Here for you. Sure. The, the idea, Rob, is for you to, uh, uh, they, had, they have had a few questions about the options yep. and what they would do for us and what what we need to do from the town perspective, sure. what that means to us for those options. Sure. Thank you, by the way. So I guess the, uh, Thank you. <laughs> the short answer is that um, basically uh, all the precast companies are really, really busy right now. And so given the time of the year, um, if we want to get the project done this year, one option is to direct purchase from a particular vendor. We, we work with um, Contact. They do these types of structures all throughout the state. That's who we kind of designed and built the specification around. But the way that the design documents were put together, there wasn't any um, preclusion to use one particular vendor. So like under the normal bid process, it would go out to bid the way that it is right now. Contractors would be able to ask other precast suppliers for quotes and be um, and they'd be able to pick which one they would use, provided they provide a structure that meets the same shape and uh, size that we've designed. Um, but it, the general consensus from the contractors yeah, and the uh, general consensus from the contractors and from uh, the precast suppliers is that there just isn't enough time to go through the process. So if we op if we open up bids in a couple of weeks for this project, and it takes a couple of weeks to get a contract signed. Then it takes you know another four weeks or so to get all the drawings and stuff pulled together from their precast supplier because um, they won't lock any of that in until they have a signed contract. And so you're kind of moving very linearly along that path. So that would push us into um, you know middle of August at the earliest um, before they would start fabrication on the structure. And um, and what we're hearing is that it's anywhere from you know, 12 to 20 weeks, depending on what other projects they have and which vendor you're using. How, how long does that concrete have to cure? <laughs> so the cure, they, they have to, they take samples um, and there's an independent testing process as part of what we put together. Uh, but typically they want it to cure at least seven days um, before they ship it. Oftentimes it's closer to 14 days minimum before they ship the pieces. Uh, because you can run the risk of getting some damage in, yeah. in transit. So I think um, that's that's kind of why we looked at the option of direct purchase. Um, I got a quote for Vince um, and Tom uh, from the vendor that we work with regularly, and the price has gone up over $100,000 on the structure from them. You know, we're, we're being told that that's somewhat COVID related, that it's all kind of part of uh, the general escalation in material prices that we've seen. Um, things towards the back. But this is Dave Sawyer. I get. I, I'm on the phone. I'm just curious. Uh, did I hear it was a hundred thousand increase? It was. It was. Okay. Um, and you know we're we're being told that that's uh, you know that it's kind of COVID related to steel and a lot of the other components that are built into that. Um, I can say that in my line of work for what we do, like utility infrastructure projects, um, we've seen anywhere from 20% material increases to 75% or more on pipe and fittings and things like that. So it's not unreasonable, but it's um, it's hard when you don't have anything to compare it to, to you know, and, and so um, I thought it was important to at least have this conversation because I think it provides uh, a different kind of response on when the project can get done. There is an option that the project can get done this year if the town direct purchases this structure. We have the permits in place for it now. Um, you direct purchase the structure. We basically parallel track the public bidding process for the installation with the purchase of it. Um, and uh, that way we, we shorten the window by about eight weeks, really, because we take the bid piece out of it and the contract signing and all of that out of it, and you basically move forward with the purchase of the structure. The risk is that you basically use the contingency 
that we had assigned for the project with the structure purchase. So if for some reason the rest of the bid comes in high, you'd be over the over the project budget that you guys had established. I, I actually haven't. Go ahead, Dave. I, I have another question though. Uh, being a contractor for many years, if we do a direct purchase on that, do you see any impact from the uh, the bidding from the other contractors that would bid this job that they're not making their markup on on uh, their end? Because I know a lot of contractors will bid the materials with the markup, and if we do a direct purchase, how's that going to impact uh, our labor costs on the other part of this project? I would I would add to will it you know would it reduce a markup maybe as well you know that's a hundred thousand dollars more if we direct purchase it would that eliminate some of similar some of the some of the markup that could potentially be there on that piece so those are both really good points and questions um i think you know from my perspective on the face value we see markup anywhere from like five to ten percent on these types of structures so in general you would expect to see a reduction in it but it kind of complicates the process when you take the material component piece out of their hands because then they're dependent on the town and the free cash supplier rather than just the free cash supplier. And right. just from like a strictly contract standpoint, it's always nicer, you know, in theory it's great to save that markup, but it's nicer because they have control over the free cash supplier. They're dictating when payment's occurring. They're dictating when it's being delivered to the site. And right. it, it's just easier to handle. So what I've found is actually that contractors keep a little bit of markup. It's definitely not the five to 10%, but they keep some markup because they still have to coordinate and schedule and do all those things, which is which is why they get markup on it anyway. Right. Um, so there, there is that component. We had a pre-bid meeting for this, David, to go back to your uh, comment, and we had significant interest in the project. Um, the, the general comments from the contractors were two, two things. One, everybody agreed that if we, we kept the culvert or the structure in the uh, in the project that it wouldn't get built this year. Um, that you, you're just not going to be able to to finish it this year. Um, so they understood that if they want to do it this year, it could be taken out, and that would be a path forward. And nobody seemed to really question whether or not that was a reasonable approach. They also said, you know, if you if you keep it in, um, you know, they can solicit from other pre gas suppliers throughout New England. It's a large structure. It's it's something that they could. Uh, work through and, and talk with others about, uh, but there's no guarantee you'd get a better price than what context proposed either. So what kind of liability does it open the town up to with us ordering our materials? And like, I mean, there's there seems like there's a lot of room for issues as a result. So I think potentially, I mean, there's a lot of negative that could go up, come out of that. There could, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I mean, I've done town direct purchase of. Of different products, including culverts, not not one this size, but some bigger box culverts. And usually the issue is that um, if the, the contractor can't, it's ready for something because there's an agreed upon delivery date. Components are going to come this day, and then for whatever reason the supplier fails to meet that date, then you then you run the risk of a, a delay claim from this contractor saying, "Hey, I've got the site, I, I have all my equipment here, I'm doing all this stuff." And the contractors fail to meet their schedule. That's somewhat avoidable in this current situation because we're actively out to bid. We haven't bid the project yet. We can clarify to contractors what the expectations are, um, and that basically they would have the responsibility to directly coordinate with them regarding delivery, and that you simply have just jump started this process for them. Um, so I, I think the risk is a little bit lower there um, in, in this particular case. Brad. Brad, Brad had a question. How many suppliers are in the New England area that could supply this culvert? So we work. I've done three of similar size um, with three different companies. I think there's maybe five or six that are capable of this type of. That, I mean, to be honest, all the precasters are capable of it. A lot of them just don't do it because they don't come around as much and they don't like to have to deal with the form work and everything else that comes with these types of projects, but. Um, but, but yeah, there's, I've done at least three um, with different suppliers. Go ahead, Dave. Well, I, I was just, if we were to direct buy, is it, is it possible that we, well, I'm sure it's possible, but to get a, a 
an ironclad delivery date on this thing with some contingents that if it if it isn't because I can see if a contractor moves his equipment in and we get delayed by a week or two that they they may want to charge for their equipment being on site not operating is there a way that we can eliminate that possibility from happening uh, you asked the question that I asked uh, last week and the answer I got was not really you know everything's so flex you know so in flux right now with what they're getting for material deliveries they, they weren't willing to lock in a date in fact they just simply gave us a range if you look at that quote on what it would be um, as I mentioned at the beginning kind of working the schedule out if it's at the furthest end of their their quote range we're still going to be able to do the project this year if you if you did a direct purchase um, the other I mean the other option and, and this is all this whole conversation is time related because the other option is you could kind of suspend, if you will, the bid phase for this purchase, and then we could just put that on hold for a, a couple of weeks. We could go get other quotes for precast, but there's no guarantee that it'll be less or faster lead time, and then you run the risk of losing that two weeks. And the, and I mention that only because the contractors that are looking to install this were kind of saying, you know, it, it is Vermont. The weather gets nasty in October, and you're running that issue of if you lose the two weeks, then maybe you're no longer in the dry season. Maybe you're in the you're in the wet fall, and um, and it just it adds to their risk, which would add cost to them too. So, how how big is this? I mean, how big are the pieces that are put together? They're they're roughly uh, well, they're, they're thirty foot span. Those are single pieces, um, and they're they're seven feet or so wide, maybe a little narrower. Yeah, it says six right here. Yeah. Is there any, how, how problematic would it be to store them on site? If we were to order them, if we were to purchase them, it's done, the contractor's not ready, they're delivered. There's no real room there for that and gotcha. to be able to do the other work that we need to do. And the other pieces that typically, and, and this kind of goes to what Justin was saying earlier, when the contractors deliver those, they're, they're very coordinated. They come with the right pieces in the right order. So they'll, they'll show up with one truck at a time and it's a, it's a kind of orchestrated ordeal where the truck will back up, they'll take the piece off that they need, set it down with the crane, get that truck out of there, move the next piece in. So they're fairly efficient with how they set it. The actual process of setting, grouting this in, uh, is it can be done in a day for even a structure that's as long as this, 128 feet long. That's the whole advantage of this kind of precast formula versus the old cast in place style structures but it's got to be well organized and well thought out otherwise it can be problematic the footings are poured the footings are poured in place there's uh they gave an option for a, a basically a shell or a prefab footing uh as a as an option but we, it's a it's set up for basically cast in place footings so is that the hundred and thirty five thousand on this quote correct so, so, so our actual price is four hundred and fifty-nine thousand. That's yep. what we're talking about today. That's what we're talking about today. You could have, you could have the option of, at your choice to lock in the hundred and thirty-five, but I don't think it's necessary. The, the footings are just uh, they're a little about Torn concrete nine feet wide and one hundred and twenty-eight feet long, so, and they still have to be poured. That that shell is a is a it's actually kind of a unique system. They come in pieces that have uh, PVC slots in the frame so that all the rebar heights and everything are exactly where they need to be. So you stack these shelves down, and then you just slide the rebar through, tie it together. It works, it does work pretty slick. What they said was that the contractor could have the option to purchase that from them, the, the footing piece, yeah. and that lead time is a lot less than the actual arch. You know, it takes a lot more time. The arch is really the, what's driving the step. So. The other piece is, you know, it's still it, in that 20 week range, we're still close on whether or not we would have the ability to pave this year. Because once you get into deer season, basically, and, and you're working between deer season and Thanksgiving, it's hit or miss. You know, we've, we've certainly done it. We paved last year on the, the sewer project. It was 55 degrees the week after deer season here for a couple of days. We got paving in, it was fine. But there are certain requirements when you pave, it's got to be. You know, above above 40 temperatures rising, you want to put good asphalt down. So there could be the potential that if that schedule was delayed at all, and you and you went with the 
direct purchase that we still might not be able to pave that road back. We might have to put back just gravel surface for this year too. But it would be open. But it would be open. Yes. The um, so if if the town were to purchase the culvert, could we then pass off the the uh, that would get the culvert on the schedule. Yep. Then we could pass off the coordination to the contractor? We could, yeah, because we're out the bid right now, we, we can revise the way the plans and documents are set up through addendum. So in fact, I haven't issued anything for this because we've had kind of this, we wanted to have the discussion with contractors, see what the appetite was for the work this year. And really everybody said they're looking for work this fall. We had, I think, I don't want to be misquoted, but it was eight or nine people attend that pre-bid meeting. Um, and we have it, at least that many plant holders at this point. So there's certain interest, there's definitely interest in doing it this fall. Um, but we just wanted to, they wanted to be realistic about it. They were pretty upfront, you know, on, this, on the schedule piece and, and they're absolutely right that if we kept it in, it wouldn't happen. So if we want the culvert open this year, we have to pre-purchase or have, the town's gonna have to purchase it and if we, if it's not an issue, then we just go through the regular big bid process. Correct. What's the likelihood of a, a decrease in cost if we did hold off? I'm just curious. I wish I would know the answer to that. That's a, that's a good question. That's right. That would like would be doing engineering. Yeah. That's a good I question. I tell you, right now I've seen where uh, lumber was running uh, 1500 a 1000 and now it's like thirteen. So, I mean, I think it peaked, but I don't know how. I'm hearing the concrete, the possibility of concrete increasing even more. Uh, is 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 likely from every all the reports i'm reading yeah i think it depends on the the types of projects you're doing i, I just opened bids today i had nine bidders on the on a roughly three hundred thousand dollars utility project and my engineer's estimate was over a year old and i had four out of the nine bidders under my engineer's estimate because everybody was looking for work this fall and to get nine bidders on a three hundred thousand dollar project i mean that's that's a lot of interest in a relatively small job but it depends, you know, then you get to this point where you're, you're fairly large, you're not going to have a lot of those smaller contractors bidding it, there's only a handful, so I, I don't want to kind of compare them directly, but it's it's interesting to see, you see projects that are falling through because the co project costs are exceeding bond authorizations, they're exceeding what boards have approved, so those aren't happening and contractors are looking to fill their schedule this fall, so it's, it's kind of that balance. But. So my other concern would be if we commit to buying this and got 460,000 out and all of a sudden it's way over budget, right? Can we get our estimates? That, that's my, that, that is my primary concern. How do we, how, how can we so protect ourselves against that? The way you protect yourselves against that is that your investment isn't actually the 465,000 right now. Um, they require to lock in and order the, the rebar and the components that go with the concrete. They require, I think it's about seventy-five thousand dollars. I don't have the quote in front of me. Yeah. It's a percentage of that total cost, yeah. and that allows them to. Maybe in there another document. I don't think it's on that page. That that allows them to purchase the materials that they need to build the arch. So, what we could one scenario we could do is the town could commit to that seventy-five number. We can open bids here in the next two yeah. to three weeks on the installation of it. Know what the total project cost is, and if for some reason it's way above our estimate, you want to put the project on hold because you need to look at other options or funds, you, your risk would be that 75000 I think. And, and that's relative because the structure is not necessarily going to change. You know. um, when, how long are our permits good for? That's a good question. I believe they're, most state permits are valid for two years now. Um, so we figured it would have to be two years, but you never show sure. us. I mean, you can set a project, you have Irene come through. Right, no, I was just curious. They, they were with special, I mean, so usually like for stream alteration type work, they don't let you work after October 15th. Yeah, and, and for this case, they understood that the town was looking to get it done this year, and we, and we got approval to work after October 15th with the permit. So they understood. I think there's a, getting an extension if it was necessary wouldn't be as much of an issue, I think. So, the, the, well, I mean, once the footings are poured, 
then the only working in the in the stream bed would be the actual, just setting the uh, culvert. Correct. And mm -hmm. and it, it all depends how the contractors go about doing it. But usually they'll rough in the flow channel, you know, and then and then do the finish work inside after the thing's set. And a structure that size, you can run skid steers and other equipment underneath yeah. it fairly easily. So. So seventy-five thousand would take and get us locked into the materials for the culvert, and then we'd just be on the hook for the what was it, four hundred and some odd thousand for fifty-nine, I believe, or fifty-nine, seventy-seven, minus the seventy-five. Right. So three hundred and seventy-five. Uh, three hundred seventy-five. So when the when the culvert was done. Do the do the uh, do the companies have a place if for some reason if we start if they start forming up the culvert and it doesn't pan out that we can do it this year are they going to be able to have a place to store it? So they said they could store it for up to a year, at, at, I believe at no cost to the town. They run into space issues when things oh, yeah. last more than a year, yeah. a year and there's a requirement. So at that point, they'd have to charge like a rent fee. Yeah. But they have a, they have an area to store it. Yes. Okay. So then they would still be in the the company that uh, built it would still be in charge. It would still have control over the delivery. Correct. Yep. And we, what we could do is we could set the contract up so that the winning contractor is responsible for coordinating with this person who's already been involved with the material purchase and and getting it all delivered. So hopefully that's not an issue at all. Well, no matter what, we're going to be out. We're going to, I mean, if this year or next, if it's not going to cost us anything to store it, we're going to be out. We're going to be into them for seventy-five for the seventy-five thousand. I assume that they'll want to be paid when it's finished. Yeah, at some point they'll actually start the fabrication. But so the seventy-five thousand basically allows them to purchase the reinforcing. And there's a special mesh that they use oh, yeah. for these arches. And then the other pieces, it allows them to finish the, the, the production shop drawings. So they have to produce you know, their stamp shop drawing for it, and there's an investment on that end. That process is somewhere between four and six weeks. So if you told them tomorrow um, that you needed, that they were good to go, it, somewhere between four and six weeks for them to get to a point where they're gonna uh, complete that first step. And then theoretically after that, they could move towards fabrication of the components. Uh, we can certainly fine tune that schedule with them and tell them, you know, what what we would expect, and and we can work it around the bid phase for this larger project. So in here it says one or more of the products quoted herein is non-standard and not returnable. A down payment of one third of this item is required and must be received prior to the commencement of any performance by contact. So. You got seventy-five thousand to order that material you're talking about, but then once, then when's this total of a third come into play? I think that's the number that they agreed to for that third. I think the third is their standard contract condition. I can, I wish I had that answer to you, but I, I think they were saying to me the commitment that they need is the seventy-five thousand because it requires them to order that mesh, and they were trying to work with the town. You know, their standard procurement policy is one third. That's what they would do if they gave it to the contractor. But I guess the short answer is they, they, they won't be able to fabricate anything for six to eight weeks after you give them the authorization. And how long before bid opening on the labor? We're, we're opening on the 8th currently, um, but I would probably give them a few extra days since we, I was hoping to not have to, you know, hoping to have a better answer for them or a clearer answer for them before now. And the eighth, the eighth is a Friday, I believe. <clears throat> this Friday, I think. So, so, so we would, I would probably push it to. Why, why would you need to give them any extra time? It's either a, you know, put it in or take it out type of thing. Well, I think they're. I, th I think a lot of them are going to question where they put their, um, where they put their money and their risk. You know, to Justin's comment earlier about the 
whether or not you'd save the markup or that. I think that they all have different experiences with precasters, um, and that directly ties to what they what they carry for pricing in their in their bid. Yeah, was there general consensus about who should build it? I think they, they've all worked with Contact. Contact produces a lot of structures for the state, um, but we didn't really get into the conversation about who who should build it. Um, they, what so I did there's ask, a reputation. There's a reputation there that they can go on, though, right? Oh, certainly. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And they, I did ask them. I said, "Is there somebody around here that can do this in eight weeks instead of sixteen to 20? And they said, "Absolutely not." So. I think everybody's kind of in the same boat timing wise. So select board, I don't think if we want to open the bridge this year, I don't think we really have an option. I think we need to move ahead and authorize seventy five thousand dollars to start. I concur. Was that a motion or a second? No, that that was neither. That was just uh, <laughs> that you know. makes pretty good. Yeah. So, well, let me fix what I just said. I make a motion that we authorize seventy-five thousand dollars to um, start to start the process of the precast. Second, Colvin. This is Smith, and I second that. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion. Aye. Motion carries. So now the the. The question is, um, how well are you going to be able to uh, keep this uh, moving on? So I, th I think I have, um, I actually have the addendum to the contract kind of pre-prepared. Yeah. Um, and I basically wrote it up two ways, one if we kept it in and one if we didn't. So I just need to make some modifications so that I would expect that that would go to contractors tomorrow. And that's how we'll keep that moving along. And then Vince has to respond to this pre gas supplier and basically say that the board's authorized this 75,000. Please get us into your schedule. And then I'll work with Vince to just make sure we don't pass that next milestone of a, of a larger investment yeah. until, we, until we know whether or, not we have a, whether or not we have a project. Well, I mean, if work is short for, the, for large contractors, you know, I mean, yeah, and, and there's there's a lot of interest in just, and a project like this comes down to what their concerns are related to, you know, if we have a flash kind of rainstorm and how they impacts how they bid, you know, yeah. the reason you see such variation in contractors' bids when they're bidding the same exact plans, the same exact specifications, the, the variation is often their assessment of risk and time to yeah. so. a lot of their experience exactly exactly oh okay, i think i think if we get a if we get a half dozen bids you know the other everyone's going to know how many bids we're getting overall not not how many bids but generally how many people are potentially bidding i think i'm not worried about hitting our overall cost at this point even though prices have gone up some i think Contractors are, are paying attention enough to know what's going on in the market. Things will come they, down, and, and they were all here for that pre-bid meeting, kind of talking amongst themselves yeah. about projects that have fallen through this this year because of, you know, being able to budget, right. So, okay. okay. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Aye. Thank you, everyone.